Hey guys, what's up? So, I thought I'd show you this little uh, Dell R210 server build here with the, I'm going to put PF Sense or Sophos on it. And I had pretty good luck in my last video um, putting that one together right there in wireless access point mode. So I decided to put a, together a uh, server for a customer with the same thing, same thing, uh, same kind of wireless. So on the other motherboard, I actually had an onboard uh, wireless card, PCI, mini PCI card. But on this one, I'm going to do the external PCI card. This is actually gonna, whoop. this is actually <laughs> good thing I have extra ones, but um, this is the actual the uh, an Ethereum chipset and if. If you want your server to go into wireless access point, then you'll need a Netheros chipset. And that's what, it, this should do about 300 megabits. Um, yeah, Netheros 58D92. So that, that should do about 300 megabits, but let me show you this server real fast. Yeah, these servers are actually really good servers. You can get them cheap now. You know, they've been superseded by the Dell R220, but I picked this up over at a recycler. For uh, 60, 60 bucks. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, so it came with uh, two gigabyte of memory, and it came with a Core i3. I don't need a lot because I'm just doing a firewall build here, but so Core i3, two gig of memory, which I'm going to upgrade. That's why I had I'll see on my server. I mean, I have stacks of memory up here that I can I can use. Um, so this is actually not a, a Dell server. It's, it looks like it's not Dell branded. So Dell actually white labels their servers to other companies and manufacturers. So that's what this looks like right here. So I'm also going to put a, I went to Micro Center, I got a 120 gig SSD drive. I mean, I don't need a lot of space because it's a firewall. So, all right, so I'm going to get the uh, first things first. Got to get this wireless PCI card in here. because I want this to be, to work as an access point. Yeah, I've actually had these wireless cards for a long time. So hopefully they work. So there is the Ethereos card, and this is gonna allow wireless clients to connect to that. And dual gig, one will be WAN, one will be LAN. But if I wanted to have more, more interfaces, I could just take this off and put like a, an external NIC on there. But I gotta take this and I gotta, Pick up the hard drive, put that in there. Start getting the OS loaded. All right. All right so let me give you a quick update on this uh, uh, Dell R210 uh, server project here. It's been a day or so, but I actually I ordered a bunch of stuff for this thing. Um, this is actually a Dell iDRAC card. It's a remote access card. This is the enterprise version. Um, because this is actually an older server, I was able to get a new processor, a Xeon. So I'm gonna go from a Core i3 to a Xeon. That was ten bucks. This was like 12 bucks, and I also got some more memory. So all this stuff, you know, besides the server, was like uh, 30 bucks to upgrade the RAM, the processor, and the uh, remote access card here. Uh, this will be nice for a remote reboot. So sometimes if the uh, OS crashes, I, I don't have to uh, physically go in front of the server and, and, re uh, and uh, pull the power. I can just log into the DRAC remote card and reboot it. So this should work with other servers, but Interesting, it looks like it has an SD card too, so. I do actually have other, uh, I mean I have Dell R710s, you've seen in my colo, I have a couple of uh, tower servers, R410, uh, or no, excuse me, T410, or the, the tower version. But, uh, all right, cool, so I'm gonna get this in and uh, just pop right into this spot right there, but, all right, cool. All right, so the RAM and the processors that came in, this is a Xeon processor, let's open this up. First, I'm going to change out the RAM. Okay. So this should be eight gigs right here. It's actually ECC memory. All right, so let me double check to make sure it's ECC. So when it ends in an E again, I know it's ECC. This is unbuffered, non-registered ECC memory. 
Okay, another one gig. So this is four two gig. There should be more than enough to, for the firewall. There's no graphical environment in the firewall, so you don't need all the extra RAM. Alright, so I'm going to change the processor out. So I'm going from a Core i3 to a Xeon. Towel, get that stuff off the uh, old uh, thermal paste. Okay, thermal paste. Back on. Okay. All right, let's see if this thing fires up. And there we are. Alright, so we got the uh, one quad core processor, quad core Xeon, 8 gig of RAM. Alright, so now we're ready to uh, load the OS. Alright, so there it sees it as a Xeon. Xeon 3450 and 8 gig RAM, so now we're ready to install the firewall software. I'm actually using Sofo CTM, by the way. Alright, OS is installing. If it, uh, it runs Linux, by the way, if you didn't know. All right. All right, guys, there it is. So, all right, so I decided to keep that for myself. There you go, take a look. So, see, see the antennas on top? That's uh, 2.4 gig and 5 gig. And uh, that's a 48 port Cisco uh, PoE switch. I mainly install Cisco stuff for a living, uh, phone systems and networking gear, but this is a Sophos firewall, it's pretty awesome. I'm actually taking out a uh, Cisco ASA 5505, but below that is a cable modem. It fits nicely in that little rack, and I guess the unique thing about this build is the uh, integrated AP. So it's just your standard PFSense Sophos build, but with the internal uh, wireless network card. So cool, got it going. Pretty good server, you know, pretty cheap, you know. So good uh, firewall build. Like I said, it fits into that rack mount right there. You know, a little small uh, wall mount rack. I did actually put it in a shelf. I didn't have actually have the rails, but. Um, you could actually get it in there too if you wanted to. Just uh, screw it in there. Like my rack threading is a little bit too big. So, all right, cool.